الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين Welcome to a, another episode of the Heroes of Karbala As we've mentioned the vitality of the story of Karbala is that there are people from all kinds of backgrounds, all different kinds of ages, different kinds, different tribes, different places, different areas, but all of them are united in their love for Imam Hussain in their adherence for Imam Hussain This is the key, that even with our different backgrounds, our different countries, our different places, our different interests, our different cultures, what is important is the love of Imam Hussain is the adherence to Imam Hussain is the realization of the message and the importance of the message of Imam Hussain This is the story and the lesson from Karbala overall. Particularly we're looking at individuals who make up the story, the Karbala narrative. The individuals, the companions, the Ashab of Imam Hussain The Ashab for whom Imam Hussain says that I have Ashab, I have companions unlike any other companions. My companions are unlike any other companions. They are the companions who will be loyal to me till the final moment, even after their death, they will remain loyal to me. And Imam Sadiq alayhi salatu salam for these companions says, Bi abi anta wa ummi in ziyarat Ashura, in ziyarat uh, of the Shuhada of Karbala, and the ziyarat of Imam Hussain alayhi salatu salam. Following the ziyarat, the ziyarat of the Shuhada, Imam Sadiq alayhi salatu salam says, Bi abi anta wa ummi. May my father and mother be sacrificed for you, O companions of Hussain alayhi salatu salam, who died at Karbala. Who are they? They are the most amazing companions, the best of companions, the best human beings at that time who came and realized and had ma'rifat of Imam Hussain and therefore laid down their lives for him, even though some of them were old and some of them were young. Imam Hussain He's on the journey towards Iraq. When he's on the journey towards Iraq, he stopped at different places. When he stops at different places, people come towards him to find out who is he, where is he here, where is he going, what is he doing, and some people join him. Some people join him because they know he's Hussein, son of Zahra, son of the Prophet. They know who he is. There's other people, they don't know him. They think, let's chance ourselves, we're curious, we want to find out what is he doing, they join him. When they join him and they realize what's going to happen, Imam reminds them, he says, look, if you think you're joining me because you think that, it's because I'm going to get lots of wealth and then you're going to have a share in that, then that's not the case. And some of them realize themselves that Hussain he has a small army, He's going against Yazid, who is the superpower of the time. It is not going to be favorable. There's not going to be any wealth or success that's going to be involved in this matter. So they start to leave. Some of them, they leave. They think that we're not going to get what we want, so why should we join him? However, all of these people, whether the people who join him or the people who leave him, they're all Muslims. There's one individual who is special in this narrative of Karbala because when he comes to meet Imam Hussain alayhi salatu salam, he is not Muslim. He is Abdullah ibn Wahhab Kalbi. Abdullah ibn Wahhab Kalbi is originally from Najran, the place where they had made an agreement with the Holy Prophet Islam to stay as Christians. So he's still a Christian. He's 17 years old and he had just got married a few days ago. 
he and his mother and his wife are going home. They happen to cross paths with Imam Hussain So they stop and they listen. They want to hear. When they hear Imam Hussain Wahab is, or Abdullah ibn Wahab is impressed by the way that Imam is speaking. So he discusses it with his mother and his wife. And they continue with Imam Hussain all the way up to Karbala. When they come to Karbala, they realize that this is a different situation. They know that now the end is going to be death. We're going to die. So he comes back, he listens to his mother. And he asks his mother, he says, what should I do? His mother says to him, how do you feel yourself? What do you think? Well, Abdullah ibn Wahab says that I feel that he is on the truth. And it would be cowardly for me to now, having come all this way, to leave him and go. And he is surrounded by enemies. It is against Arab chivalry. It is against the customs of the Arab world to leave a person when they're in this difficult situation. His mother says, but it means that you will die. Wahab says, yes, I know. But my heart tells me this is the right thing. His mother says that if you think this is the right thing, then we will stay with you. We will support you. Whatever decision that you take, we will support you. When the companions start to go into the battlefield one by one, Wahab also comes to Imam Hussain and asks him to have permission to go and fight in the battlefield. Imam Hussain says to Wahab, that this person, Yazid, claims to be the Khalifa of the Prophet. And I am the grandson of the Prophet. This is a fight between Muslims. And you are a Christian, you're not a Muslim. So why is it that you want to be and, and to lay down your life for such an issue? Now, there's no record of how Wahab would have replied, but we, w we can imagine that Wahab would have said, Abdullah ibn Wahab would have said that truth, justice are consistent issues. They're not limited or restricted to one particular faith or belief. And that the teachings of Christianity teachings of Islam on this particular issue are not different in, when it comes to truth and justice. They are the same. It's mentioned that his mother came out and said that Ibn Rasulullah, grandson of the Prophet, it would be an honor for you, for me, if you allowed my son to go into the battlefield. Some narratives state that Wahhab at this point becomes a Muslim. Some narratives state that perhaps he didn't recite the kalima. I don't think it's important to dwell on the fact of whether he recited the kalima or not. We can see from his actions that he's willing to give his life for Imam Hussain and if that doesn't make a person a Muslim then there's nothing that makes a person a Muslim. Reciting a few words insincerely does not make a person a Muslim. What makes a person a Muslim is how they act when it comes to times of adversity, times of difficulty. Abdullah ibn Wahhab wants to go to the battlefield. When he's going to the battlefield, his wife, who's only been married a few days, says to, him, says to him that you're going to leave me all alone? What's going to happen to me? And at this moment, it may have been the case that Wahhab could have wavered. But his mother intervenes and she says that don't listen to her. You have to do the right thing, so go and do the right thing. I will take care of her. Then his wife comes to Imam Hussain and she says to him that, are you rightful? Are you on the truth? Imam Hussain says, yes, I am. He says that if my husband dies for you, will he go to paradise? Imam says that, yes, he will go to paradise. Then she says, can you promise me that he won't enter paradise without me? 
Imam says, I promise you that you and your husband would enter paradise together. Wahab went into the battlefield. He fought. He killed many of the enemy soldiers and then he returned. He says, Mother, are you pleased? She says, I would only be pleased when I see you dying, defending the grandson of the Prophet. He returned to the battlefield. He fought even more intensely. Finally, he was wounded, surrounded by all sides, and he's killed. When his wife sees that he's surrounded by all sides, she runs into the battlefield and she puts her face on the face of her husband. Shimr is watching this. Shimr ibn Adil Joshan, kill of Imam Salas. He's watching this. He orders his slave to go and kill the woman. They, he takes a mace and he smashes it on her head. She's a young girl, teenage girl. How much will it take to kill a young teenage girl? She drives by her husband and thus the promise of Imam Hussain is fulfilled that you would enter paradise with your husband. Omar ibn Sa'd orders his soldiers to cut off the head. Abdullah ibn Wahab's head is cut off. When his head is cut off, he takes the head and he throws it into the... He throws it towards the mother. The mother takes the head and she throws it back. She says, this has been given in the way of Allah. It will not be taken back. People had been... This has been given in the way of Allah, we will not take it back. Now, if you observe this story, the lesson from this story, you observe the story. What is the story? The story is that a young man with his whole life in front of him just got married with his elderly mother has come and joined a person who belongs to a different faith to him. Why? In the fitra, in the nature of the human being, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instilled the love of truth and justice. If you want to test this, just go up to a person and say you're a liar. He will not like it. He would say, why did you call me a liar? says, you don't know what I'm saying you're a liar about. says, it doesn't matter. The fitra of a human being abhors lying and loves truth. The fitra of a human being abhors oppression and likes justice. This is in the fitra, the nature of the human being. It does not need any religious training. It does not need any religious beliefs, any social beliefs, none of these things, even a person who lives by themselves in the desert and has no access to religion, no access to society, even that person, when they are tested on these matters, will always say truth is good, lie is bad. Justice is good, injustice is bad. This is within the fitr, the nature of the human being. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he's put this in the fitr of the human being, he has also made these issues, these points, the principles of Islam. These are the principles of Islam. Truth is a principle of Islam. Justice is a principle of Islam. And it was for these matters that Imam Hussain rose, for the truth to be known, for justice to be done to people, Imam Hussain rose. And the people who joined him, joined him for this reason. There were only a few people with Imam Hussain They had determination like mountains. Didn't move from their place. People in this country, in other countries, all around the world, are coming to Islam. When you speak to a person who becomes a Muslim, and you ask them, why did you become Muslim? They say, I found Islam which answers my questions, 
gives me more spirituality, guide me in my spiritual and worldly life. In other words, a person becomes a Muslim, adheres to the religion of Islam because it makes their life a better life. If you speak to people imprisoned who become Muslims, they give you the same answer. They say that we see a future in our lives as a result of becoming Muslim, as a result of accepting religion of Islam. But a somebody joining the religion of Islam in order to die. This is the story of Abdullah ibn Wahhab al-Kalbi. Somebody who joins the religion of Islam in order to, in order to die. This is imperative and very important for us to understand. Abdullah ibn Wahhab al-Kalbi joined the religion of Islam in order to die and on the first day joins Imam Hussain alayhi salatu salam and dies. Is there something in that for us to reflect? That if a person is willing to die for Islam, am I at least willing to live for Islam? Am I at least willing to live in accordance with the teachings of Imam Hussain alayhi salatu salam in my life? Yes, I'm not in a situation where I need to give my life, alhamdulillah. But I am in a situation and I am obligated and I am demanded by Imam Hussain alayhi salam to live my life in accordance with the teachings of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. So Abdullah ibn Wahhab al-Kalbi dies for Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Shows us, shows us that this is the extent of what was demanded at Karbala. But when I recite that ziyarat and say, Ya Laytana kunna ma'akum, if only I was there with you, I can be with him. How can I be with him? If I act according to the teachings of Imam Hussain alayhi salatu wasalam in my life. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa alihi tayyibina tahirin.